Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today should be a quick one because I'm doing my project mostly on the serger. Now don't worry, if you don't have a serger, you can do it on your regular machine. This fabric was given to me and it took me a minute but I have gradually fallen in love with it and it sort of captured me and I really want to put it to use today. And so I'm going to be making a turtleneck and I'm not normally a fan of turtlenecks. I upcycled this one and one of the steps that I had to do was to loosen up that turtleneck to give myself that breathing space. So I think this fabric will be really nice and lightweight and then I can enjoy the look of a turtleneck but feel still comfortable. I'll put that link here in case you wanted to see this process which was a much bigger undertaking than what I'm going to do today. And then the pattern I'm going to use, I'm also going to link a video to that because this pattern goes back to one I did oh, quite a few months ago now where I did variations on a t-shirt pattern. I used the Stellan T from French Navy. I'll put a link in the description to this free pattern online. And in the video, I took that pattern and made a whole bunch of variations on that pattern. And so I've had this whole library of different t-shirt variations and it's been so handy. So I want to use that today and I'll be using the regular body but with a little bit of a higher neck. I'm thanking my past self right now because I actually made little notes on the pattern to bring the neck in another half inch there, another half inch up just to bring the neck a little closer. Then I even made a little note to myself for the turtleneck, cut a rectangle 18 inches wide and 12 inches high. So thanks me. I'm glad I made those notes because I never would have remembered all that. So this is the original Stellan T pattern, the back and the front. And so what I already done is half inch in on the shoulder seam and this is the center back. I came up three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. On the center front I came up a full inch and in that half inch here. And now I'm coming in a further half inch. So in total from the original, it's in an inch on both shoulder seams, three quarters of an inch up on the center back and an inch and a half up on the center front, just to close up the neck a little bit more so that the turtleneck sits nicely. And yes, you'll notice that those pattern pieces are made on the back of gift wrap. And that's an idea that comes from Alicia at Thoughtful Creativity. And I think she's wonderful. And I think that's such a great idea. With the fabric I've got about a yard and a half, I think that'll be plenty for kind of a slim fitting turtleneck. All I need is front, back, sleeve and turtleneck. With all that ready, let's get busy. I'm turning my fabric right side together, but since the front and back both need to be cut on the fold, I'm going to start with a window pane fold where I bring the two selvages into the center and make sure the pattern matches horizontally. Now I've got plenty of fabric. What's going to be easiest for me is if I find a, the point of this side seam meeting the armhole, I want to have that kind of at an easily recognizable spot so that I can place the back pattern piece in the same way. So I'm going to just bring that point to like the middle of the snowflakes. I'm just hesitating here because I just want to double check the length. The Stellan T has this curved bottom, which I don't really want for a turtleneck. So I'm using this top that I thrifted as kind of a reference. I think I'll just fold my pattern piece. I think that length will be fine. And then I'm just going to straighten out this corner. That'll be okay. So then I'm just making a note. I'm folding up an inch and a quarter on the front. And I'll fold up an inch and a quarter on the back. So maybe I'll just fold in this corner here too. All right, and I'm just going to fill that in so it's square. Good. Okay, I just slid my cutting mat underneath. My two little changes are to fill in that corner and to fill in my half an inch here. So this is my marking wax, or you can use a scrap of soap. I can barely see that line. You probably can. The red friction pen, I can see a little bit more, but you still probably can't see that. But anyway, you'll just have to trust me that I filled in half an inch there. And yes, I did eyeball that. That's okay. And then my little corner down here. Normally I would pin everything before I start cutting, but I have it all planned out. I know I have enough fabric, so let's go. There's the front. Oh, that's gonna bother me. When I folded that fabric, I should have, ooh, 
I should have made sure I folded it on the middle of a snowflake. That's just going to be an off-center snowflake right down the middle of my shirt. Ooh, I don't like that at all. I'm going to see if I can figure something out here to recut that. Darn it. Maybe I can use this for the turtleneck piece. Okay, I might be okay. All right, I'm going to recut that front. I'm going to cut the back before I recut the front. So now I will be smarter and I'll put something center right on the fold. So I only need the fold to be this wide and that's hitting this little this line between the snowflakes. So I'm just going to pick up that line right there, fold that. That's going to be lovely. And then that doesn't waste any fabric because now I have a little bit more of a concern about fabric since I just totally messed up cutting out the front. I'm still going to aim to put this point right in the middle of the snowflake just so I've got that recognizable spot when I cut the front lower down. Sometimes if I make mistakes, you can learn from it. <laughs> now, I can't forget to fill in that half an inch on the back neck and then fill in this corner. All right, the back is successfully cut. A new fold for the front. I've got my line going central down the pattern. I'm happy with that. And just a fold that's just big enough to accommodate the front. This point at the middle of a snowflake. Oops, let's keep these lines lined up. Okay, looking good. Filling in the corner. Adding my half inch around the neck. I'm going to cut those two little changes first. Just because I know my mind will wander and I'll forget. <laughs> And I can barely see the line, so I better do that first. No more mistakes. And then this is a three-quarter sleeve. So again, I'm just going to use this top as a reference. The sleeve is four inches longer, but I'm going to want a little hem too, just a little narrow one. Uh, you know what? I'll do five inches longer. I want to see if I can get this point at the middle of the snowflake again, just so it's all in line with the front and back. And then I still have five inches here at the bottom, no problem. So if both points are on the snowflake, then I also know that I'm on grain. To make sure that I, my mind doesn't wander and I just cut right there, I'm going to leave my pin hanging over the edge there so that it'll stop me from cutting right through where I did not mean to cut through. And I said I was going to add five inches and then yes, I'm going to cut that change first. Yes, a rotary cutter is such a time saver. It's so beautiful to cut with, but I never cut notches with the rotary cutter because they get too big. So just a little snip for the notch, especially since I'm just sewing this up on the serger. I'll be using a very small seam allowance. This is my front that I cut poorly. So now I'm going to fold it on the vertical line. 18 by 12 is what I need. So 18 on the fold, so nine inches. This fabric is quite stretchy. So if your fabric, like you just need to make sure that this can stretch around your head. Good. Okay, I'm ready to go to the serger. Okay. So at the serger, my first step, I'm just gonna serge the turtleneck just on the long edge. And then I've got my front and back right side together. And I'm just gonna serge the two shoulder seams. Okay, the two shoulder seams are right side together. And I'll just find the next corner and bring those together. Corner to corner. It's actually not corner to corner. It's sewing line to sewing line. If I did go corner to corner on an angled corner like this, where you actually sew is not going to meet up. So it's the sewing line that you're trying to meet up. And my seam is going to be narrow, so I just want to match it up right there. Good. 
So I just chain those together and then cut them apart. Awesome. Alrighty, I just tried this little turtleneck piece on. It looks too big, but it actually was great. And I needed that to stretch over my head, especially if your knit is not super stretchy. You have to just ensure that you can pull it on over your head. I just want to now quarter mark this turtleneck piece. The seam, I think I'll put at the center back and then right opposite that, I'll put a pin to mark the center front and I'll just make sure my edges are together. And then that pin goes to the seam to mark the two midpoints. It's not the shoulder seam because the shoulder seam is not actually midway because the neck is lower in the front, but it's just the midpoint. I want to have that quarter marked. There's the neckline and you can see the lower neck is the front, higher neck is the back. So I'm going to fold in half to find the centers, make sure my shoulder seam comes together and then here's the center front. And I could have marked a little notch there when I was cutting. That would have been a good idea. Just a little snippet on the fold of the center front and center back. And then bring those two pins together to find the halfway point. And in this case, because the neckline is high, it's just a little bit ahead of the, sh of the shoulder seam. On a lower neckline, it's quite a bit more forward. So that is quarter marked. And the center back goes to the center back. I'm not worried about these tails of thread because they're just going to get surged off on the next step. Those two pins go together. Midpoint just ahead of the shoulder seam. Center front to center front. So it's all three raw edges together and it's right sides together. Turtleneck's going right side together with the top. And that seems like that's going to fit in just perfectly. So I just need to arrange and make sure my edges are staying together. And as I go around this circle, I'm going to trim off threads, but that's about all I'm going to trim off. I'm really going to try to not cut off anything else. All these yucky threads get cut off. I'm sorry if the serger sometimes makes my camera shake. And then I would just check that for any little gaps. If I did miss an edge anywhere, I just want to make sure that looks good on the outside. No puckers, no gaps. Looking good. All right. I just tried it on and that turtleneck is just great. Like it's not too choky and it sits nicely. I'm really happy with that. Whenever possible, I like to set a sleeve before I sew the side seam. It just makes it much easier. These sleeves with the Stellan T are symmetrical. So it doesn't matter if I've got a right sleeve or a left sleeve. But what I want to find is that little notch that I cut because that's going to go right to the shoulder seam. Pin that little notch right to the shoulder seam. Pin corner to corner. I always like to pin matching points first and then pin in between. I like to put a lot of pins on a sleeve because you're putting a mountain into a valley. It's like two completely different shapes going in together. The head of the pin should always be sticking up so that you're pinning perpendicular to your seam especially on something stretchy. If I pin horizontally in line with the edge, then as soon as I stretch it, my pin's going to fall right out. I'll pin both and then I'll serge both. I just serge both sleeves while I thought I was filming but wasn't. Keeping my edges together, right side together. And then double check, no puckers, no gaps. Looking good. Okay, while I'm at the serger, I'm just going to do one more thing and that is just serge across the bottom of both sleeves. It's just much easier to serge a straight line than it is to serge around a circle. So I, I like to serge it before I close up the sleeve. And the next one goes right in. Back to the cutting people. So now I've got the whole top right side together. My pattern should line up and now again I'm pinning matching points. I'm going to pin the seam to the seam, corner to corner. And it looks like that print is just matching up perfectly. And I'm really glad I recut the front. It looks so much better when it's symmetrical in the prints. So then again, matching points, corner to corner. I'll pin both like that and then serge both. Oh, now look here. On this side, to get the print to match, I've got to fudge it at the bottom. That's okay. It's more important to me that the print matches 
than that bottom edge. I can easily just trim that. Get my threads all out so the serger can do its job. And just be careful with pins of the serger. I don't really like to have them at the serger at all because if I miss it and it gets caught into that cutting blade, we have bad news. I do like the glass head pins. They are much easier to spot at the serger. The last bit of serging I'm going to do on this whole thing is just around the bottom edge. And just before I finish off, I just like to give it a little bit of a stretch. Do you see here where the serging has gathered it in a bit? I just want to make sure that's not happening anywhere. Then I don't have to worry about it later. I just need to hem the bottom and the sleeves and we are done. So now for a hem on a lightweight knit like this, I will definitely be going to my regular sewing machine for the first time, right? Everything else is all just on the serger. But for this hem, I will be going to the regular machine. And sometimes on a lightweight knit, the hem will go all ripply, right? And it doesn't look nice. So I just checked in my stash to see if I had something like this. And this is not quite right. This is called seam soft, mainly for adding stability to knits. I could have used it like in the shoulder seam or something like that if I want to make sure that it can't stretch. What I was hoping to find in my stash is one that irons on. If you have one that's fusible, that's perfect to use right now. And it does make a nice difference. So this is not the fusible one. So I'm gonna go and serge again. I wanna make sure I'm not stretching the top um, cause that's just going to build in the ripples. If anything, like give a little tug on this tape and condense in the top, right? So I'm just going to serge that around. I really do think that'll make a nicer hem for me. So again, a little bit more planning would have been good, but we're managing. So with the wrong side up now, place this tape on it. And can you see what I mean? I'm not stretching the top. I'm keeping like slight bit of tension on the tape. And if anything, I'm compacting in the top. That is definitely more stable now. And now I can just turn the width of that and sew right up on my serging. That'll be just fine. Now it does lose its stretch though, right? And so I don't even think I have to use a stretch stitch on this because it's really not able to stretch anymore, but I think it'll sit really nicely. So I'll just be folding it right along the width of that tape. So I don't even really think I need to pin and I'm just using a straight stitch because really there's no more stretch there. And I'm sewing on top of the serging, not down by the fold. So that was nice and easy. I didn't have to struggle with that at all. It just kind of fell into place and that looks just fine, doesn't it? And there's just zero ripple. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew the hem of the sleeves differently. But because the sleeve is so skinny, I can't get this around the free arm. So what I do instead, I wanna have the circle of this sleeve facing up. I don't wanna have it in the machine down like this where I can't really see what's going on here. Instead, turn it, turn it so that, that circle is facing up and my presser foot's gonna be right inside there. Got the sleeve turned right side out so that I can just get my presser foot right in there. I've got a few pins around just to make sure that as I'm kind of wrestling with this a little bit that I'm staying even. Also, for this, because I'm not using that Seam Soft product, I'm going to use the zigzag. It's only one millimeter in the width and two millimeters in the length. So it's just a very slight zigzag, but it's just enough to have a little bit of stretch to it. I've used a black thread, which just absolutely disappears into there. I mean, I cannot even see it, so I doubt that you can see it, but it is kind of nice because it doesn't when your zigzag is that narrow, like just one millimeter wide, it doesn't show up as a zigzag. It just looks kind of normal. So that's good. I'm happy with that hem. And you know what? After I hem the other sleeve, I'm done. Okay, so that's it. This is done. That was fast. And I'm really, really happy with the final product. I just love it. It feels so nice and lightweight, but I still have the look of a turtleneck and I do love this fabric. Thanks so much for watching today. It's always great to have you along for the ride. And until next time when Catherine sews, you take care.